What's up, guys? Welcome back to Slapshot Sweethearts. Today, we are here with forward for the Toronto Six, number 24, Sarah. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, anytime. Super excited to get a Toronto player here. Inaugural season. Very exciting. Your first t Toronto player on the show? Yes. Yeah, yeah nice. <laughs> Good. I'm very hyped about it. So to start off, tell us how you started playing hockey. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, that started <laughs> All the way from the start. Yeah, all the way back. Uh, I think I was seeing my dad playing, my cousin playing in the Q, the junior like league here in Quebec, and I just had to play. So at two and a half years old, I asked for Christmas to have a pair of skates, and I got it. And and from then, I just started skating and playing at four. So since then, I still love it, and I'm still playing. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. I mean, I can't even imagine like walking successfully at two and a half like skating is an awesome feat I mean and so you kind of took advantage of all those opportunities early I mean you left Canada to go to the U.S. for college what was that decision like in you know leaving you know your home country obviously it's not a huge jump but you know it's still still a big move yeah it was definitely for me because French is my first language and I kind of you know, I had those classes uh, at school for English, but it's nothing compared to like real life English. And uh, so when I came to QU, uh, I was I was barely capable of speaking and it was really hard in classes. Good thing I had some teammates here there for helping me and I had some tutor at night. So really worked hard the first year, I'd say, to learn the language, learn the country and everything. Are, is there a similar like structure to like college sports in Canada as there is here? Yeah, I wouldn't say like similar, but yeah, we have like universities. It's just like I would say the NCAA just offers like I would say more for players. They're financially or like even like the game is just so good there. So yeah, no, so, that's fair. And I mean, it kind of relates to your road to the NWHL. Obviously, as the first season with the six being as a part of the league, you already knew that the NWHL was sort of an option, which is kind of unrelated to some of the other players that we've interviewed, just because some of them are from the very first season of the league and didn't really know that that was going to be an option. How did you sort of prepare your college career and your postgraduate experience knowing that professional hockey was might have been in the cards for you? Yeah, um, I think for me, I just love the game so much that it was hard for me to think that after college, everything would be over. So I was just looking forward to playing pro and I think it was like a big decision either like coming uh, back to my hometown and start working uh, after college or to keep playing. So for me, I had to go with keeping playing. I just I just love it so much. And there was like this endable UHL and then the well was close to where we play. So yeah, yeah. Back, so that's that's how I knew. And then some alums were like playing there. So that's how I got, like, I watched a couple of games there, and then I heard there was, like, a Toronto team coming up last season. So I was just like, hey, this is in Canada, so I'll just go with it. So is that what kind of pushed your decision to choose Toronto over Connecticut, just to, like, go home back to Canada? Yeah, I think so. It was in between those two teams. It was a hard decision for sure. I think also COVID had, a uh, like, a lot to play with it. Border being closed and everything, uh, I think, for me at least – I, th I think Toronto was the best decision. Yeah. And of course, being a part of the Sixes inaugural season is an incredible experience. Obviously, you touched on COVID a little bit and it, how it wasn't necessarily a regular season. Um, but what was it like being a part of that team, you know, for the first year and getting to know each other and just setting that original culture to begin with from the start? It was, it was like huge, you know, like first team, first in Canada. I was for sure like exceptional and like playing with those good players that are all over like coming back from Sweden and most of them are just from Canada it was just super cool like this experience is something I'll remember forever and it's just nice to be a part of like growing the game absolutely yeah speaking of like growing the game like obviously this year like a lot changed for the NWHL with like the TV deal like endorsements all of that kind of building what was that like excitement like of kind of being on the ground floor of this like new type of system. Yeah, it was for sure very nice. I think it was even better for players that played in the end of before uh, and seeing the 
the league just growing, the game growing. But for me as a like a rookie, it was just awesome to see where this is going and knowing that we have like fans, like our fan base in Toronto were like awesome. Even though we couldn't play there, we just hear from them like on social media all the time. And like you said, like playing on big platforms for our streamings, it was just like, it was super cool to be a part. I'm for sure a fan. I ordered a jersey. I'm waiting for it to come in because the Toronto jersey was by far my favorite. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Did you get a a, t- uh, a name on the back? No, like- I like I didn't want to like have to choose. So I was like, it's so fresh that like I didn't have the time to like pick my favorite player. But I'm like, I can always get it personalized later. Exactly. So I have a blank one for now, but I'm so excited about it. Which color did you pick? I got the white one. Yeah, I like the white one. It's it's like different. It's oh yeah. It's definitely different from like any other hockey jersey I have. So super excited about it. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, and so you kind of touched on it, but going into the bubble, obviously the excitement was building. What kind of things since you mentioned the border closing, what were you guys able to do? Obviously, we have had a couple different Canadian players on from men's hockey, and they were able to touch on how strict the Canadian uh, COVID rules are up there. And we are both from the East Coast in the United States, so we don't really have a gauge on that. What were you guys able to do in terms of preparation for the bubble prior to getting there? Or was it really just like hitting the ice and going as soon as you got to Lake Placid? It was it was kind of hard because we were supposed to start in September and then things in Toronto just got worse and worse and they kept like uh, shutting down the city. So we got there in like October it was like we had to work out outside the rink and sometimes it was almost like snowing so like real canadians just like we had like barbells and like weights it was like insane like sometimes they could put like some little tents so we don't have like rain and it was like freezing so no on you (laughs) yeah that was something i will always remember how like dedicated the team is but we couldn't practice as a full team until january so we never like Honestly, it was so funny because half of the team I didn't know. Like, I was just like, hi. Sometimes we could nice say hi. And, yeah. And <laughs> nice to meet you. Brand, yeah. And the team is brand new. So I would make jokes with like, because I was with the younger groups and there was like the older guys. And I was like, hey, nice to meet you. And then we're just making fun off of that. But once we had the, the chance to jump with everyone on the ice, it was just like, at first it was kind of scary just because you don't know the other players. But after a while, we just had such good chemistry and yeah it was 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 gonna say you guys must have clicked fairly quickly because going into lake placid you guys were killing it like just really in sync like did you guys kind of feel the pressure to like synchronize really quickly or did it just kind of happen i think we i think it just kind of happened like such a fun group i think for us it just took like a game or two to just adjust like the first two games were kind of hard on us like It was hard. Like, you're a new team. No one ever, like, played all together. But our team was just so much fun off the ice that I feel like on the ice it was just, like, easy to be with. Yeah, no, that makes a ton of sense. And obviously Megan said it, that you guys had so much momentum. You left the bubble in the first seed, I believe. So Mm -hmm. what was that like, obviously, hearing about the bubble shutting down? I'm sure you were hearing rumors prior to that. But what is that like, having all that momentum as the new team, in showing everyone that, you know, you're nothing to be messed with and then having to shut it all down and not knowing what's going to happen. What was it like in the locker room and everything? It was for sure. Like uh, once we learned it was like on the Wednesday, we had like a day off and the playoffs were like coming like the, like, yeah, the eliminations round, I would say. And it was just like, at, at least for us, it was like hard. It was just like, Oh, we had like such like, I feel like win in our wins wings. And then it was just like, we wanted to keep going, but seeing that everyone had like most of the people on our team had COVID and everything like it was best I think what the league did was like best for the health and safety for players but for sure it was a bummer because I think if we kept going <laughs> at Lake Placid I think we we would have had a better chance for sure. So once it was shut down number one seed at what point did you guys find out we're going to go back. And then how soon did you get to start practicing again? Cause we've heard from a few people who are like, we only had a month. Some had even less because of COVID. That goes back to the Canadian rules are different than the yeah. United States. So I mean, 
No, it was hard because we had to quarantine for two weeks here in Canada as soon as you cross the border. So basically, we were just chatting in the group chat. We didn't know if the the season would be back. We heard rumors from, you know, it just goes around the league. And we're like, oh, hoping that the season might like be, it, we might be able to play again. But it was hard because you don't do anything for two weeks. Like, it's super strict here. Like, the, the police officer, officer, like, comes to your house and they just, like, looking if you're doing a quarantine, right? So we couldn't, like get out of our houses and things like that. So, and then most of the girls like went back home. Like some of them are like from Saskatchewan and some of them are like from the East coast. So they went home thinking this, like the year is over, but then we got the call, like, let's come back. So everyone had to bring it back. And then we had some players uh, in the U S so they couldn't play with like practice with us. So that was kind of tough for us. Yeah, no, that's that's really interesting. And I mean, so again, were you guys able to prepare it all in Toronto or was it really like once you got to Boston and hit the ice? I know we talked to one of the Connecticut Whale players and they said because their roster was so ravaged with COVID, they really didn't get to practice until they got to Boston, not because of any COVID restrict like safety protocol, but just because they were so sick, they couldn't practice until they got there. Yeah, we were lucky. I feel like the guys that had COVID in our team were, I would say... They, they they were like healthy after a while and then we all everyone like just got back to Toronto I would say we had a little like less than a month I would say a month to practice uh, which was good but like I said like not the whole team was there like some of them were like in the U.S. so they would have to find like a place to practice uh, we keep them on the loop like how's it going and everything but it's, it was a different like atmosphere I would say. Totally. So going, getting ready for Boston here, you're in Boston. What was the, what was like the atmosphere in the locker room, like leading up to that or like during the game? Cause kind of slow start mm -hmm. struggling a little bit. Like what was the, the attitude there behind it all? I think I, I still can't get my head around it to be honest. Like it's been like, what, like a month and it's just frustrating. Cause I think we had like such a good team. Like the players are so good, but also like good people in the team. And we just, I don't know what happened, to be honest. I think I still can't get like over it, but I think we just didn't show up. Like you said, like we, we should have like started hard in the first period. I think we came back on the second, but it was like a little too late and then kind of got discouraged uh, in the third. So, yeah. So it was hard to come back from like, came in on such a high like ranked number one and then just like doesn't go your way but I mean then it almost like builds the momentum for next year being like we know what we can do mm -hmm. so now we have to like capitalize and finish on it so is that kind of the feeling afterwards like okay we made it this far next year let's bring it that one step further oh yeah for sure like to be honest like we won the season I think it was just overall weird to uh go back to Boston, like for every team, like I don't mean just for us, just every team, like the momentum, it's completely different. It's like a whole new year basically, but you're ranked. So like one versus four and then Boston is such a good team. Uh, they were playing at home, didn't have to travel uh, 11 hours like we did and everything, not that it would have changed something, but for sure like next season, we know that what we're capable of and we will just bring it back. Hopefully next season we get to like have more of a season and see more games. I know Shannon and I have talked about it. Like we want to like go to these stadiums and get to like root for everyone again. I know we're excited to also for us just to play again uh, in front of our fans for the first time. You know, just we didn't have the chance to and for sure like playing like at each team's rank. Like that's going to be like a ton of fun. Yeah, that's something I didn't think about that you guys as the six haven't had fans before I was about to say before you had mentioned it that obviously Boston came in with a ton of momentum but they were at home even though they didn't have fans they were in their comfortable arena they had the new mayor there the mascots you know the Bruins tweeting at them blah 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 which obviously gives them some sort of momentum that you can't really make up it's just there it's like having fans or not having fans so that's a great point that I didn't necessarily think about for the six in particular yeah, exactly. They had like their home locker room and everything like, right. they had, like set up. And I think uh, that's another thing that kind of, you know, the locker room situation. And it was just like we had uh, a smaller one that we barely fit in it. But 
I think that was just mental and we need to be stronger on our part to be mentally tough next season. If anything that they throw at us, like we can do it. Like Digit always says, like flex and flow, just go with the flow and whatever happens, happens and you, you know, need to be stronger. Absolutely. Hey, not too bad, not too bad for a first season. So I know, right? I know. <laughs> We're going up next year, but Sarah, sure. thank you so much for sitting down and talking with us. Um, let everyone know where they can find you on social media. Sounds good. Thank you so much, guys, for having me. It was a ton of fun. Yeah, anytime. <laughs> well, guys, you know who we are, Slapshot Sweethearts. I'm Megan, that's Shannon. You know where to find us, Twitter, S Sweethearts Pod, Instagram, Slapshot Sweethearts, and we will catch you guys next time.